All right, so now into, whoops, too fast, two-way repeated measures. I've had friends jokingly call these the devil. I don't think they're that bad. If you can get the basic idea of one-way repeated measures, it's just one way on speed. But now it's two-way repeated measures. So we've got two variables, and every one is in every condition. Since it's all repeated, we're still in every single condition. <clears throat> and this is kind of the same slide we had for two-way between subjects last week. So I got two independent variables, participants in every single condition. So even more bang for your buck. Repeated measures meaning same participants, aka with it, subjects, pair. It's not really paired because it's more than two, but dependent. And then last week we talked about using the number by number. So how many levels times how many levels repeated measures. So this one is a three by three repeated measures ANOVA. And so we're looking at the effects of advertising on different drinks. So this is from a study that he did looking at how effective the advertising would be at maybe getting people to not drink and drive. Okay. See, we've got beer, wine, and water. So there's the first three. Positive, negative, and neutral advertising, there's the second three. So it's like three by three, repeated measures ANOVA, where the dependent variable is evaluation of the product from negative 100, it's awful, I hate it, to a positive 100. I want to drink it all day. Okay. Um, and so that means we have nine conditions. <clears throat> Which it's like to me, like, whoa, make it stop. And in a change of events, we have a very colorful slide for this one. Um, and I don't want to spend like, like a whole lot of time talking about this because once you get into double repeated measures, the math just kind of like sails out the window and goes on vacation. Um, but you'll see we have the same breakdown. So we've got sum of squares total, sum of squares within, sum of squares between. So this one out here is still uh, individual differences. Sum of squares model include, or sum of squares within is still <coughs> each person minus their group. But then we're going to break that into three separate little effects. So we did two-way between subjects we talked about. First goes the main effect of gender, and then we did sport, and then whatever was left over was the interaction. Similar idea, we're going to have the effects of drink, the effects of imagery, and the effects of the interaction. But there are three error terms now. Boo. So we're controlling for their scores on drinks, their scores on imagery, and then their condition scores. So it's almost as if there are three just totally separate ANOVAs. Okay. Because I have to control for the fact that they're in all three drink conditions and all three imagery conditions. But if I want to only look at drinks, I only want to control for the fact that they're in the drinks. If I want to look at interaction, I got to control for conditions. So it separates by which thing we're controlling for. So you'll get three error terms. And you don't really have to understand like how mathematically that works, because um, ew. Okay. <clears throat> but getting the same basic, it's the same split up here. It's just different, a little different out here. Okay. And there's not even a table on the F table explained. There's just some little notes because it's pretty gross. <clears throat> so how do I run this one in R? We're going to do the same setup, <coughs> um, except we're now we're going to run into a new problem. So today is the day of like, here's a bunch of random new things that you haven't thought about before. <clears throat> so let's go back to the data. So you should have RM2 loaded. And that's at the very top if you don't. Oh, damn the man. It imported with a goofy column name. Okay. So you want to check yours real quick. See if it's got that little symbol, we're going to want to fix that first. Okay. One line like 80-ish. So we're going to use that column names function we've been doing to fix it. It's beer pause for beer positive. OK, I got that. That's fixing it. Now, if I look at the data, here's the, pro the underlying problem. I have nine columns. 
Um, and the columns are actually the combination of things. So the columns are conditions at the, this point. They're not levels, they're conditions. If this is like, whoa, I can't handle this, the other way you can do this is to take it into Excel and rearrange it yourself. Okay. Um, and I almost suggested that, but I was like, let me try and see if I can explain how to do an R. If you're not totally getting this GL function, just in Excel, rearrange it. The problem with doing that, though, is you got a data screen in the line. So that's why I wanted to show you how to do this. We did this GL function before, and everybody kind of was like, what's going on? Uh, so hopefully this time, with a real example, it'll make more sense. So the very first thing I have to do is add a participant number. This is the exact same code I had a minute ago, and the only thing I changed out was the data set name. So combine the data set with a participant number. So now RM2 has 10 columns, including participant number. Always do that first when you get to the analysis part. We're going to melt the data. So data set name, uh, participant number ID, and then all the column names. Don't forget, you can use the names function to get a list of all the column names. And then you can cut and paste them. If you're bad at spelling like I am. So the names function will give them to you in the order they're in in the data set. The ls function gives them to you in alphabet order. <clears throat> All right, so melt the data. Now here's the problem. I have one column for participant number, one column for variable, which is two IVs at once, and one column for the rating of the drink. I need variable to be two separate columns because it's two different IVs. <clears throat> and that's what we're going to try and do right here. So what I did was I renamed the columns, hopefully this time something a little bit clearer. Participant number, it's condition and attitude. And now I want to create two separate columns, one for drink and one for imagery, so I can treat them as two different variables. Does everybody get why we're doing this? Yes? We need two columns because it's two IVs. So this GL function is for generate levels. So it allows you to create a new variable and have them labeled all in one. So it's a create the variable and factor it all at the same time function. So what you want to do is the number of levels. So we've got three in each one. The number of cases in each level. And then for the second variable, you have to add in the number of times to repeat. So let me see if I can explain that by looking showing you the data. So I have, for my first one, let's do drink. So I have three levels, beer, wine, and water. Okay. And they are in that order at the moment. So I've got them as 60 beers, 60 wines, and 60 waters. Um, so I did the number of levels, three, the number of times that you should repeat that, 60 times each, and then I labeled them beer, wine, and water. And the cool thing is, if you screw this up, you can just overwrite the variable. So I have repeated measures long, dollar sign drink. That variable doesn't exist. We're creating it with this function. And it's going to give me 60 beers, 60 wine, 60 waters. So if you run that, do the view function again, and just make sure it looks right. So here's drink. Look at all that beer. And then it switches to wine. Did it switch to wine in the right place? Yep. Okay. The other way you can try to check and make sure it looks right is sort by participant number. This does not reorder your data, it just shows it to you in a different order. And make sure that the variables line up. So I got three beers, three wines, three waters. Okay. <clears throat> so if you aren't sure if you're doing it right, you can kind of check. The next thing I got to do is do the imagery condition. <coughs> But the problem is, it's not. I can't use this exact function, or it will label them all positive. All the beers will be positive. So I need it to be positive, negative, neutral, but repeat 20 at a time. So I'm going to do 3 and 20. So I've got those three levels repeated 20 times each. But if I do that, it's going to complain because I don't have enough. So the 180 there is do that until you hit 180 cases. So it gives you the total number of times to repeat. 
I wish it was 320, do this six times or something, that would make more sense, but it's total number of cases. Run that one. And I think that you're just gonna have to kind of practice with, because I find it just a little confusing myself. So that's why you should always check and make sure the lines line up with the group that you're interested in. So it's beer and it's positive, and I've just split it up. You can also just sort it out in Excel, but the problem with that then, then comes in, if I'm gonna data screen, this is after the data screening step. So I need it to be on the final data set. So we'll practice that a couple more times. After that, thankfully it's not too different. So we're gonna use that easy ANOVA function again. Now we're gonna add more variables. You wish it were the star operator. That would make sense. That is how everything else in R works. Not easy and over. Lame. So this is why I said repeated measures is kind of a pain. Um, so what we're gonna do is for the part that says within, it's dot, don't know why. It is, should be list, but it's not. Okay. And then here are both variables at once. So I think sometimes the really the hardest part about R is figuring out with this function how do they want it to, to look. Um, I struggle with that too. I looked at a lot of the help stuff last night trying to figure out like why can't you just make it list that would match tplot? Why can't we just do this like lm? That would make more sense. But um, it's just figuring out like how does this particular function want it to look? And so since I have multiple variables, it's dot open parentheses drink comma image. Okay, so iv comma iv. The rest of it stayed the same. Data equals data. Dv is the dv attitude within subject's ID is participant number. So you'll notice we never use in group because that would treat it as one IV, one giant nine leveled IV. And then we wouldn't get the interaction. So let's run that. I repeated the library commands again so that if you're just doing one of them and you cut and paste the code, the library commands are still in there. So you should get all this crazy output. And I copied it. So I'm looking at, like, first, let's just look at Mockley's. And look at that first one. So for drink, it is definitely bad. Okay. So there are different variances, differences in the variances and correlations between drinks. And that might just be personal preference. Okay. So some people like beer, some people like wine. Otherwise, you're talking about water. Like, I can't imagine rating water given a positive add is going to change just a whole lot. So we have a problem with drink, but not with image, right? Because it's not less than zero, zero, zero. So which one should I use? That's how I, this was very late, so I was trying to be funny. Nobody? All right. Definitely need to fix the drink one or a drink. Okay. Um, anyway, so which one should I do? Well, for the drink one, they're both less than 0.75, so I'm going to go greenhouse geyser to fix those. So when I report that, I would say that I did the greenhouse, oh gosh, I can't, I, swear, I think it's two S's. Greenhouse geyser P, I gave the regular P and the adjusted P. So I'm going to interpret the ANOVA now. I know it comes up first, but you're going to look at it second. And I wrote up each one. So you'll notice that since this is a what's called a square design, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, so it makes a square, um, the uh, F numbers, DF model, DF residual are very similar. If it's a 2 by 3, 2 by 4, a non-square design, they won't be at all. So be sure you're looking at the right line. So I have a 2 and 38. Come over here to F, 5.11. Get P, and then I have my... Um, ADAs out here, so 0.12, and then the imagery, so 2 and 38, it's it got a big F value, so it's going to have a big ADA, 0.58, so that's large, and then their interaction is also significant. So just like a between subjects and ANOVA, I've got three Fs to talk about. And thankfully, well, effect sizes are fairly easy because they're just right there. Yay! <laughs> okay, so what now? 
I can analyze main effects and interactions or just the interaction because this is, um, remember we talked about if there's an interaction, a lot of times people ignore the main effect because it's superseded by the interaction or the interaction is a higher order effect, so I'm more interested in that. Uh, but I'll give you examples in the code on how to do both depending on what your needs are. Okay. But, super important, uh, when we get to Tukey for main effects, you have to add this code that apparently is experimental, interesting, it was in the help guide that it was experimental, interaction underscore average equals true. That basically means give me the main effect. Otherwise it gives you a whole bunch of warnings and it's grumpy. So let's try that. Now, you will notice that the code at this point gets abnormally long. And that's because we have two main effects so we'd have to analyze each one separately, because okay, they're both significant. So if I did Bonferroni, it's the same code, so I didn't really change anything. So we've got beer versus wine. and water, and I bet people are, oh no, what did it do? She has an error, it says I'm missing a call, or unexpected call or something. I hate that. I didn't click anything. Why? Those, those are some of the most arbitrary errors, because you can run and get stuck. JK. It's being a bitch, it's fine. <laughs> okay. I think R is drunk today. It might be. Mm -hmm. it's so... Wine versus beer is 0.35. So we don't feel any differently about wine versus beer overall. <laughs> beer versus water. And wine versus water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't feel any differently about the actual alcoholic drinks, but we do feel differently about water versus wine, and we would have to look at the means to figure out which one's which. <laughs> to get the second main effect, I just switched out the IV. Okay. And I won't write that one down, but I could look at imagery, and they're all very different. So at least our imagery conditions are creating differences in ratings, because you would expect positive to be higher than negative, higher than neutral, right? Or your imagery isn't doing anything. Um, if I want to do Tukey, first thing I would do is run it as a LME. And you'll notice that it's X times X, which is what we've been doing for between subjects and OVAS. And then the rest of it stayed the same. So random intercept for participants. So deal with the fact that participants are repeated. Data is repeated measures too. And then I still have to run it twice, but you'll see multiple comparison procedure. I got drink and then image. And then this is that thing I was saying it was important to add. Oops. It's interaction underscore average equals true. So it's basically saying just give me the main effect. Ignore the other stuff. So my wine versus beer is not significant on Tukey either. And then the other two are significant. This is the fun part about Bonferroni versus Tukey. So here, it's actually a little closer. It's on the marginal side. Here they're about the same, but here they're different. So you're never quite sure what you're going to get when it corrects. Right. <coughs> they often will agree, um, but Bonferroni in general tends to be slightly more restrictive. But if you had to correct, that's why I'm talking about the drink one, right? Bonferroni is supposed to be better, and it is. So that's why some people like it. Um, I tend to like Tugi to do everything, because then I don't have to think that hard, although it's slightly harder to run on this one. And then these are all significant as well. Because remember, the effect for... Um, imagery was 0.58. It's a very large effect size, so we're getting very big differences. 
Okay, that's the main effects. But generally, we're not going to do main effects if the interaction is significant. I'm just showing you how to do it in case you have a, a condition a time and you're like, wait, I just need the main effects. How do we do that? Um, if I decide to analyze this simple effects, I can go across or down. So I've got beer, wine, water, positive, neutral, negative. So how many different tests is that going to be? So there's not a smaller number of levels. So either way, right? Because it's going to be the same because it's a square design. Anybody know? It should be three, right? Three. But you're close. Why is it not? Nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. So it gets three for each one. Okay. So it's three tests here, here, and here. One, two, three. But I got to do that for each one. So it's three total. I mean, nine total. Oop, I can't draw. You get the idea. So I could go across or down. And in this particular case, it doesn't matter because it's the same number of tests each way. So pick the way that m you can explain better. And it's going to be nine tests total. So the code is going to look a little nuts because you have to do it three times. This is a lot of cutting and pasting at this point. <clears throat> so the same rules apply for simple effects. Split the data. So we're going to split by the larger number of levels. Um, in this case, there isn't a larger number of levels. So I picked imagery um, so I could compare within each imagery. So for positive ads, what is the difference between your beer, wine, and water? For negative ads, what's the difference? So split first, then analyze. Um, and I, sh I should have made that distinction a lot clearer in the original and the other set of notes, that the variables you split on, you do not analyze. So split and then analyze. So we'll analyze only by the other variable, which in this case is drink. And rinse, wash, repeat. Okay. And then I have a graph. So the very first thing I did, I'm on like 135-ish. I split them up. So I subset the data. Remember, these have to be spelled exactly right, and it needs to be double equals. Um, so let's see here. I run positive. I've got 60 observations. I have 180. So I should have three of them that have 60 observations, which adds up to my total of 180. So when you split the data set up, unless you leave a group out, they should add up to the original amount of lines. Because there are only... Um, Uh, 20 people in this study, but it's 20 people with three different these three levels. So it's 20 people tested three times. That's where the 60 comes from. And then Bonferroni is actually the same thing as above. I only did, uh, you would only do drink. I don't want to do imagery any, again because I've already split, but I have to do it three times. Once for each data set. So what's changing here is the, what's in front of the dollar sign. So I got positive, I got negative, I got neutral. So we go one, two, three. So in the positive condition, the only thing that's different is wine and water. In the negative condition, beer is different than wine and water. And then in the neutral condition, wine is different from water and beer and water are kind of close. So we look at a graph, oops, okay, there we go. So this is positive, um, what did I say? So for positive, scroll up here, wine and water are different. So the green bar and the blue bar are different. In the negative condition, beer is different from everybody. So here's beer, you pretty much can't make beer negative. So the average is positive even though it's in the negative condition. Right, so here's my two negatives. That is different than these two. And then in my neutral condition, wine is different than water and beer. So wine is higher than water. Beer is kind of close to being higher than water. 
So you can see that it's an interaction because these, the pattern of the three bars is different for each one. So I know, I, looking at this graph, it's like a great example of an interaction because this one, two, three pattern is not repeated. If they had the same one, two, three pattern, it would not have an interaction. Does that make sense to people? Yes, reading these takes some, a couple of looks at them. I split up the graph by the way I split the design too, so it would be easier to see. Now if you wanted to do two key instead, you still have to split the data, um, you still have to create your uh, LME output, and all I've done is take out imagery from each one of these and change the data set name. So it's positive, negative, neutral. If you get the same effects three times, make sure you have the three different data sets. And then you didn't copy and paste it and forget to change data set names. So I'll run those bad boys. So I was like, they're going to be like, why is it 180 lines of code? My three two keys. I don't need the main effect interaction thing out here because I've split the data sets. So it only thinks there's one effect. And I get roughly the same um, answer. Uh, water and wine are different. Uh, wine and beer and water and beer are different. And then in this one I do get both effects. I get the beer and the water and the water and the wine. So in Bonferroni, that water-beer interaction didn't happen. Um, so you can pick either way, and then I have like all of the means. It gets kind of gross, but that's means, standard deviations, and n. So you can calculate Cohen's d for each one. So I have main effects, main effects, and then interaction down here, because it's got both variables under list. And then this is how I made that graph. Um, <coughs> So you'd still have to calculate for either main effects or interactions. You still got to calculate the means to be able to calculate Cohen's d. Now, when you're doing Cohen's d, I left the note in here. Here, the easiest thing to do is going to be d average because you don't get t. It would be hard to do d diff. It's possible. It's just like three extra steps, and we've already done three extra steps at this point. So I figure at this point you're like, just give me the simplest solution. So it's going to be d average. Filling in the numbers you get here. <clears throat> so it'll give you means, standard deviations, and lengths. Okay, so all of that is repeated measures in a nutshell.